Hello friends, in today's video I want to talk you through how I turned this plant pot into this funky bohemian inspired looking plant pot that now is a home for my lovely plant Lucy and lives in my kitchen. So first thing that I did was give it a good clean with multi-purpose cleaner and then I cleaned off the cleaner with just a damp cloth. If your plant pot has a shiny finish to it, it doesn't have a lot of grit to it, you could always take a little bit of sandpaper, give it a little scratch and then degrease it with a spirit that you might have at home or even just soapy water to make sure that everything else sticks to it well. The next thing that I did was apply a layer of difficult surface primer just to give my plant pot a little bit more of a grip. Once that was fully dry I went ahead and I decoupaged it so I did not want to decoupage the whole plant pot. I just wanted to add a strip of pattern because when I thought about adding pattern to the whole plant pot I felt like it would take away from the actual plant itself so I just wanted to add a little bit of something to it but not overdo it. So I found this picture on Adobe stock photos. I will link it in the description for you. So I took it to my local printers and I got it printed out on office paper with a laser printer. If you don't have access to a laser printer, you could always use your normal inkjet printer that most people have at home, but use photo paper instead. I do have a video on how to use photo paper for decoupage if you're interested. So what I did is I cut three or four centimeter strips. I cut out two. As you can see once I've applied them there is still a little bit of a gap between them but that's okay because I wanted to add uh, molds in there anyway so I thought it would cover it so I didn't bother with actually going all the way around. So I cut these strips, I spray them with water, dab the excess water off. The water helps the glue seep into the paper a little bit better. Because my plant pot is curved I did get a couple of creases in the paper but it's okay they're not very noticeable. So once my decoupage paper was dry, I went ahead and I started applying mold. So once again, I'm using Redesign with Prima Molds and Das Modeling Clay. Again, I will link all of those in the description below for you. And I decided to go for this trim because I thought that it kind of reminds me of the pattern on peacock feathers. It has like that circle in the middle. It kind of looks like the eye on the peacock feather. So I thought it complements it quite nicely. And so I applied that all across the top and the bottom edges of the paper that I applied and I'm using trade grade PVA glue to glue my clay onto the plant pot by the way and then once I've applied all of the trim I went ahead and I filled in the gaps between the paper strips so I decided to go for this interesting looking kind of reminds me of a biscuit mold in the middle and then two flowers on either side of it I don't think I've ever used this biscuit looking thing before so I just really wanted to try it out and actually put it on something Then I let my clay dry for about 24 hours and once it was fully dry I looked at it and I realized that I wanted to add a little bit more to it and so I went for this little thing, I don't know what to call it, I've been calling it a leaf, um, I don't know, it's probably one of my most used molds however, I love it, it's so universal, it's amazing and then I glued them on underneath the bottom trim and I tried to space them out as evenly as I possibly can. <laughs> Once all of my clay was fully dry, I went ahead and I painted my plant pots. I tried to match a shade close to what you can see on the yellow bit on the eye of the peacock feather. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to call that thing, but that's what I'm calling it. Hopefully you know what I'm referring to. The paints that I used here is a mix of chalk paint and acrylic paint. Acrylic paint and chalk paints, they mix really well together. So if you're ever stuck for a shade, go ahead and mix them both together. They work really, really well. So this is what it's looking after two coats of paint. Then I take some gloss varnish and I slab it on everywhere. So I apply it everywhere, all over everything that we just did to make sure that it all stays protected during the next step, which is gonna be aging. So this is very, very important to do if you're gonna do the next step like I did it, because it then helps you wipe away any excess paint that you might have there or any paint that you might not want somewhere. That's what's gonna help you get rid of it. And in this situation, the glossier your varnish, the better. 
and then I go ahead and I do the scary messy bit. So this is where I mixed up a little bit of the same paint that I used to paint the whole thing together with some black and I watered it down a little bit to make sure that it didn't dry too quickly and it was easy for me to wipe it away. And as you can see, I'm kind of working in smaller bits. I apply a little bit of paint, then wipe it away. Apply a little bit more paint, wipe it away and so on, you get it. So you apply your paint and then as you wipe it away, it wipes away off of almost everything, just staying in the little creases or dips in the mold, bringing out the dimension of your mold and kind of aging the whole thing as well, giving it a little bit of that timed look. After that, I applied a little bit of gold gilding wax. So the gilding wax that I'm using is by Finiba. It's Art Alchemy Wax in Vintage Gold. Once again, I'll link it below. And I only applied it to the molds because I wanted to make them shine a little bit. I thought that they still looked a little bit dull. So I wanted to bring them out a little bit more. And to seal my pot, I used clear spray varnish by a brand called 151. I will try and link it for you if I find it. I don't think that it's a water-based varnish because of the way that it smells, but honestly, it does not say on the can whether it's water-based or what it is, but I can say that it's, it's actually really good. I only cost like two pound at my local shop, but I've used it so many times. It's completely non-stick and it literally takes like 20 minutes for one coat to dry. So that's what I used. Unfortunately, I did not film that step because I did it while my little one was awake playing with his dad. And if I got my tripod out and took it outside, he would have been there. And of course, I don't want him to stand there and smell the fumes and stuff. Just imagine me spray this plant pot like three times. <laughs> And yeah, so there you go. So this is the final result. This is what the plant pot looks like. I absolutely adore it. I'm actually in the process of remaking another one to match it because I still had some of that paper left over. I am absolutely in love with it. I absolutely love the way that my plant, Lucy, by the way, her name is, I absolutely love the way that she looks in this plant pot. It makes it look so much better. And I just really hope that she's gonna like it. So far, she's been doing all right in it. And yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it gave you some ideas for what you could do and how you could maybe remodel some of your old plant pots that you might have lying around at home. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more. And if you have any suggestions, ideas, anything like that, leave those in the comments down below as well. If you would like to connect with me on any social media, there's links for that in the description as well. And like I said, links for everything used in this video are gonna be down below as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.